will the wedding party <coughs> please come forward. Church to marry 
in Christian marriage. Dorothy, Jacinto, and Frank as husband and wife. As part of this worship celebration, mm. Frank and DJ has been living together for quite some time. The Western culture of which we live allows this and has become a norm. However, Frank and DJ have decided to obey God hmm, and enter into a covenant with God so that their union would be highly favored of God. And as a witness, as marriage is supposed to be, that God is who he is, and we are in God as we are, now too will be one in covenant with holy God. And this is a witness to the rest of the world on our intentions to live a godly life. God blesses everyone. Yes, he does. But it is highly favored when we enter in covenant with God. So therefore, Frank, I say to you, I ask you in the presence of God in these people to declare your intentions hmm, to marry, to come into holy union with DJ, it is your intentions, yes or no. Amen. Amen. DJ, I ask you to declare in your clothes and your right mind that it's your intentions to marry, to come into holy marriage with Frank. To be your husband. Mm. Yes or no? Amen. 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 DJ and Frank has declared their intentions to be joined in holy matrimony. We as a family will now declare whether or not we will support them as husband and wife in holy matrimony. And I will ask this congregation this question. Will you all be, by God's grace, do everything in all of our power to hold and support these two people in holy matrimony? If you do, say, I do. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are God and God alone, and you have instituted marriage as one of the finer, best examples, the best witness of what union ought to be, what communion ought to be, what community ought to be, and marriage as part of the fabric of our society, you have so ordained and instituted holy matrimony. We ask, Father, that as we celebrate the union of DJ and Frank, that you would bless this union. And as we go forward in this covenant, that we, Father, would be all drawn closer to you and live the life that you require all of us to live. Amen. 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 Hmm. Let's see. All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You repeat after me. We are going to exchange vows. You as the bride, as Christ. 
Christ has chosen his bride, the church, will be in support of the servant leader that you will marry. Mm. All right. In the name of God, repeat after me. In the name of God, I now take you, Frank, to be my lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, for better or worse, in Sickness or health, if he is rich or poor, mm, to love and to cherish, and be with him until we are parted by death. In the name of God, I Frank. In the name of God, I Frank. I take DJ. What do you call him? I take <laughs> DJ. To be my lawfully wedded what? To be my lawfully wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. If you are poor and if you're rich, if you're poor or if you're rich, <laughs> in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, until death do us part, until death do us part. The rings, please. The ring symbolizes Christ in an unbroken circle of his love for the church. These rings will represent hmm, an outward expression of an inward condition of the love that DJ and Frank have for each other as a demonstration of the pure love that Christ has for the church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful, we are grateful for these symbols, symbols of love, symbol of support, symbol of sacrifice, symbol of joy, peace, and symbol of that which you have so joined together. May those who bear these rings not only bear the rings outward, but bear the ring of faith Mm, in you, inward. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Which one is yours? They are all the same. Yes, we are. Oh, okay. I frame who wed thee. Yes. I frame thee with all my heart. With all my heart. With all my soul. In the name of God the Father. The Son. Be the Holy Spirit.
power invested in me, I now pronounce Mr. and Mrs. Dorothy Jacinto and Frank Lira. You may salute one another. Church, Mr. and Mrs. Frank and DJ Lira. church say amen. 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 Let's say amen again. Amen. amen. thank God for the witness of marriage. We thank God that we as a congregation <coughs> celebrated the marriage of DJ and Frank Lira. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful for this time that we have gathered together to witness such a grand occasion in the life of our church. And we pray, Father, that it is an example on how we will go forward as one with you. We ask now, Father, at this hour that you would hide me behind your dear cross, that these your people, those whom you are married to, as part of the divine union, that you, Father, would speak through me, that we all would hear what you desire for all of us to hear, in spite of what I may do or say. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. In your Bibles, we find a very familiar passage of Scripture. It is taken from Genesis, the second chapter, the 18th verse. And this is taken from the Jewish study Bible. It reads thusly, the Lord said it is not good for the man mm, to be alone and I will make a fitting helper for him. For just a few more moments we'd like to share words around this thought, our needs, our needs. The Genesis story has given us many a lessons on the community or the expected community of God's people, part of the fabric of community and communion even is that of marriage. It is a familiar story in that God created in six days the world, the universe. 
plants and animals. And on the sixth day, he created mankind. And part of the more detailed uh, information we get in chapter 2 of that of chapter 1 is that God, when he made man, he said it was not good. Tov is the Hebrew word. Tov. Not good for this creation to be alone. To be alone. And alone in Hebrew means, is equivalent to our word bad. It sounds like bad. Alone, bad. And in verse 18, God declared unto the first human that it was not good for the first human to go through this life alone. And God declared that he would make a helper or a helpmate or a companion so that this first human would experience God's other creation in such a way that it would complete that creation in man. The creation that God created from, and it's some poetry here, out of the rib of Adam was woman. Hebrew has it that it was a splitting of that first human apart from each other so that Adam could have a reflection of himself that in this reflection of himself, he would be completed. He would have a companion. He would have a helpmate. He would have another person that is right suited for him. And in the 18th verse, it declares that God's intentions, he said that he would make such a helper. But it's not until verse 21 that God actually made this completing person for Adam. You will read, and hopefully you will read that, that in verse 19 and 20, when God had said that he was going to make someone suitable for Adam, that he then mm, brought all the other animals <laughs> for Adam to name. Imagine Adam, after hearing God say, I'm going to make someone suitable for you, just right for you, and then having to name all of the other animals. First, the little squirrels, perhaps. Uh, then some mayflies. Uh, had to, Adam had to name that. Uh, the lions, they came, they came in pairs. And, and Adam is having to name this. And, and, and perhaps he's going through his mind, well, certainly the giraffe, I, it's not for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and, and certainly the serpent came and at that time he kind of walked upright. Not for me. I do not want that. It does not appeal to me. But he had to name them all. He had to go through them all and he saw how the animals interacted with one another. How they were union together as one. And Adam, having to go through verse 20, verse 19 and 20 of naming all of those animals, 
came to a point hmm, of need. As he looked at how the rabbits interacted with each other, how the monkeys, when they were named monkeys, how the elephants interacted, pairing themselves together, that he perhaps saw something that he did not have. And it came to a point of I need that. I need that community. I need that person that God said that he would make just for me. Hmm? And I believe that is a good lesson for us across the board in everything that we encounter that we can compare and or contrast that if we do not come to a point of need then we cannot realize the full creation that God has for all of us. Till we get to the point of I need a person, a thing, a circumstance in my life, hmm, we may not realize all of the fullness of God's creation just for us. Hmm? That, 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 that we may want a lot of things, hmm, that our minds and our hearts may say we want to be like so-and-so, or we want so-and-so's companion, companionship. That, that, that we want, but it's not until we get to our need that God can flesh out all of the stuff that we once desired that he can totally give us a creation that is right fitted, that is suitable for us. Hmm? You know, when we were growing up, perhaps there were a lot of others that you thought you wanted. Well, at least I did. That, that, man, she looked good. You know, I want that. Huh? I want that type of companionship. Hmm? Hmm? And, 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 and it may have been lust, yes. Huh? But it was something I wanted. But I believe that God knew what I needed and he wanted me to come to that realization of what I need. So that his word is true that Paul says in Philippians 4 and 19, my God will supply your every need. And in that need, I realize that I cannot mm, do it for myself. That I may go after what I want and I may or may not be successful, but I have a God who's promised that everything I need, he will supply. That he would get the glory for supplying what I need. The person that I need. Hmm? The job that I need. The family that I need. The way of life that I need. That God would create such a reality in my life because I need. And when we get to a point of need, we are more submissive to what God can create in our lives. This Western culture of which we live pits us to do the comparisons and the contrast. And we look at what may be a quote unquote good marriage. And we say, I want a marriage like that. Uh, and, and some of the attributes and characteristics of good marriage go hand in hand with us following God's command. And, and we all will be have similar, similar unions like that of DJ and, and Frank. Hmm? I don't know what DJ was comparing Frank with. 
But somehow, she got to a point of needing friends. You may look at Frank and say, I will never need that. I don't even want that. But God knows our every need. God knows what's right suited for all of us. And it may not be Frank. It may be someone else. It may not be DJ. It should not be DJ because now they are married. Hmm? But whatever the person whom God has for us to complete us, that's suitable for us to be our helpers in life, God has chosen that person. And it's not until we get to a point of need, like Adam did, I needed a woman called Eve. She knows what makes my heart She knows how to touch those buttons that no one else can touch. Huh? 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 She knows that. He knows that. Huh? Uh, I would look at couples who get married and I would sometimes wonder how could they ever hook up? What does he or she see in that other person? I just, just can't explain it. Huh? And it's not for us to explain it because it is God who knows what is needed. It's God who puts us together. And Proverbs says, 18 and 22, that it is favorable. We receive God's favorable when we find the spouse or the companion or the person to help us through this life in a great favor. Particularly with the institution of marriage, Jesus said that God created them male and female. Huh? So therefore, a man and a woman will leave. Mother and family, or some situation as comfortable to them as then cleave to one another. Matthew 19, 4 and 5. And then when you get to 6, verse, he said, therefore, let Nothing or no one put asunder what God has joined together. When God puts you together, when God gives you that the desire that you just can't explain why you've fallen head over years over that person, that no matter whether they snow real loudly, you still love them, whether you have to clean up behind them, uh, whether they get on your last nerve at times, uh, whether you don't like them but you love them all the same, it's just something about when God touches our heart mm, that we can put up with that person when we can't put up with anybody else. Sometimes you can't even put up with yourself, but you can put up with that person, that you're willing to sacrifice, that you're willing to cry with, that you're willing to go through life with, that you're willing to be on the top of the mountain with, that you're willing to be on the valley with, that you can go through thick and thin, life or death with that person because God has saw your need and given you what you needed. Huh? Boy, if I had not married the person whom God wanted me, oh, I probably would not be here at this church. Mm -hmm. I probably would have lost my mind living with somebody else. I know she already was halfway that way about living with me. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. But she is what I need. The person whom God has given you and you have been obedient to his word is what you need. May not be what you want. Boy, there are many times when I looked at Beyonce, oh boy. Huh? Huh? But she ain't what I need. And one of the most touching moments that I've had when counseling those couples who, you know, I'm entering into the seventh year of this church. 
And we've heard about the seven year itch and all of this, you know, that type deal. When you don't say the things you used to say, when he won't change, huh? And you're trying to get him to change, and she won't stay the same, <laughs> huh? Because he's changing every day, and you want it to be like when you're 16, and she wants you to be when you grow up. Uh, <laughs> and there seems to be some friction there, but the most tender is moment that I've come when we get that male in particular to look into that female's eye and say, I need you. I love you, and I need you. <coughs> and her heart just melts. It is just something about being needed. And I believe when we get to the point of resigning ourselves to God and say, God, I love you, but I need you. I need you, God, in my life. I need you to provide for me. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to lift up my head. I need you to hold me and to console me. I need you. Oh, Lord, I need you. When we get to that point of needing God to stew and say and direct us and teach us and hold us and love us, when we get to that, mm, he comes to us in such a way mm, because we have acknowledged, I need you. Our need for each other for community, for communion comes from it is satisfied with God. Our need every day, every hour is of God. And we as a church, as the bride of Christ, need the head of our church, which is Christ, every day. Amen, amen. and amen.